All right, guys. So in the first video, we got this idea that in this whole 2D Gaussian function, when the both x and y values are equal to zero, we get the maximum value of the Gaussian function. Just like that, if we are going away from that zero, either to the right or to the left, doesn't matter. In both the cases, the value of the Gaussian is dropping. And after some time, it's also going to go to zero. So all these kind of things, we have got an idea, right? Now, whatever kind of output that we had created with the help of np.lin space, right? Minus three to three, minus four to four, all that kind of thing was done specifically such that zero is coming in the center. Why? Because at that zero, we are getting that maximum value. To completely understand that whole curvature, the bell-shaped curve, I had specifically done it in that particular fashion. Now, if you want to implement the same idea while creating a kernel, a 2D Gaussian kernel, how you can do it. So that's something that we are going to understand. For that, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to explain you this concept of what happens if I'm going to print, uh, like, you know, for X in range of five, or let me just call it as zero to five, both are same thing only. But now let's see if I'm going to go ahead and print this value of X and end it with, uh, let's say, comma. Let's see what happens. So this is the kind of values that we are having for x starting from 0 going all the way up to 4. Now this is something that we expect by running this simple for loop. Now let's say what I want to do is I want to shift all the x values one unit to the right by looping it from 0 to 5 only. I want to shift all the values one unit to the right. So now what I want to do if my 0 is present on index 0 I want to shift it to index 1. Then 1 will be shifted one unit right that is over here. Similarly 2 will go over here and 3 will come in place of 4 and 4 will not be even visible because we are looping from 0 to 5. And just like that, if we are shifting 0 to over here, what will be present over here? The minus 1 value that we are ha having to the left of 0 will, will be visible now. So if I go ahead and do x minus 1 over here, this is called as transformation. What have I done? By using this minus 1, you will see that all these x values are shifting 1 unit towards right. So if I run this, Try to compare both these things. All of these things has been shifted one unit to the right. The reason you are not able to see 4 is because I am still looking for the same value 0 to 5. So 4 is not visible now. And over here the reason you are seeing 1 is because 0 has moved one unit to the right. So there need to be some value that is on the left of 0. What is that value? It is minus 1, right? So this is the kind of thing that I really want you to understand because this is heavily something that we'll be using in order to create our Gaussian kernel, right? One thing, what you have to keep in mind, that is at 0, 0, you are going to get the maximum value, right? So now by keeping all these kind of ideas in mind, let me just grab my pen and show some kind of visualization. Here we are having paint. If we want to create this kind of a kernel, okay? And, uh, the way that I'm going to create my kernel is going to start from zero all the way up to whatever is the size of that filter. Let's say 20 by 25 by 25 is something that we had decided. So it's starting from zero, going all the way up to 25, starting from zero, going all the way up to 25. That's the kind of thing that I'm all, I'm having initial. Now what I want to do is I want to shift this center of zero, zero from this particular point to this particular point. Now, how can I get this done? Okay, let me just uh, skip that part and yeah. How can I shift this X part over here and the Y that we are having uh, that is over here, how can I shift this part on the top part, right? For that, what I can do is because I'm doing this kind of shifting in first of all X direction, how much do I need to shift it? I need to shift it exactly the half of the original size. So that is 25 divided by 2, but it's going to give me some kind of a decimal number, right? So I'm going to do a floor division that is 25 uh, floor division 2. So that will be the value that's something that I'll be having over here. And same goes for 0. I want to shift it up and therefore what I need to do, I simply need to take that 25, do the floor operation, divide it with 2 and I'll be shifting this value over here. And by doing this, I'm also going to bring the negative values into the picture, right? 
So it's going to be in the same way what we had understood in the previous video. The lin space that we had used in between, let's say, minus 3 to 3, right? Uh, minus 20 to 20, all of the kind of thing that we had seen. This kind of scenario will be created by shifting this 0, 0 to the center. How are we doing it? Because I already explained that if you want to shift 0 to the 1 unit to the right, you do x minus 1. Like that, if you want to go 25 divided divide by 2, that is size divided divide by 2, you do x minus size divided divide by 2. This divided divide by not, uh, is nothing but the floor operation, right? So yeah, this is something that uh, you are going to implement. The whole reason that I've explained you this particular part is because to give you this kind of sense that why you were seeing that size divided by 2 in a lot of solutions, right? Because let me just explain it one more time. If you already understood this part, you can skip it. This is the zero that is going to be shifted some units to the right. How much unit? Because it's exactly in the center. It is starting from zero to 25 or whatever. Let's it's, it's just a size, whatever you define it. So what will be the half of it? It will be size divided divide by two. What is the reason I'm doing this floor operation? So that we are getting an integer output. That's it. So how do you get to this particular point from this point? Whatever is the original location, you just do minus of that particular value. It automatically gets shifted over there. Now, what about Y value? I also want my Y to jump to the middle part, right? So the idea is just the same thing. Y minus size divided divide by two, simple as that. By doing, by implementing this particular logic, what I'm going to get, I'm simply going to get the values of 0, 0 at the center and therefore the maximum value of the peak will be shown over here. And as you go away, like, you know, the radius is going to increase up till the spread is allowed in the Gaussian function. Once the spread is over, the values are converging to zero. You will be seeing black region everywhere else. So yeah, this is something that we are about to code in a second. Okay. So let me just go to the uh, VS code. And now by using the same kind of concept, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to create a container. Uh, what is this container? This container is nothing but it's some kind of an random values. I don't even care about the values because I'm going to convert all of these values into the output of the Gaussian function. Okay. So right now I'm just creating anything that comes to my mind. Let's say NP dot zeros. Okay. NP dot zeros of what? I want it to be of some kind of size. So I'll be defining some kind of size on the top. Let's say 25 by 25 because it was asked in the question. So NP dot zeros of size by size, that is 25 by 25. Okay. Uh, now if I just go ahead and simply check the shape, print container, container dot shape. Let's see what is the output. It's 25 by 25. So this is something that I want. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I know that this 25 by 25, the zeros that I'm having over here. Again, if I are uh, trying to display something over here and explain it to you. Uh, yeah. So over here, you need to understand that your array is going to start from this index, right? This is your 0, 0 index. Then you are having uh, 0, 1, 0, 2, so on and so forth, right? Just like that, you're going to increase the row with the same column, 2, 0, 3, 0, like that you are just keep on increasing. And now remember, our main goal is to shift this 0, 0 to the center part. Now this is about, this is something that we are about to do, right? So now what can I do so that this kind of things happen? I'm going to create a for loop. I'm going to create two for loops. Why? Again, let me demonstrate that part. So for x in range of 5, for y in range of 5. Now because I'm having a 2D input, so for each x, I want to loop five different times in y as well. And now if I go ahead and print the value of x comma y in a tuple, let's see the output that we get. See, starting from this zero, when the value of x was zero, y changed from zero all the way up to four. After that, your x got incremented. You are now in the second row. You are moving through all the columns, right? Then you are again uh, moving to the next row browsing through all the columns like that. It's going to keep on going ahead. So you're getting access to each and every element one by one. 
starting from the top left, browsing to the right. After all of this right has been browsed, you're going to bottom, that is second row, browsing all the columns, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's exactly what we are going to do right now. But now not in between zero to five, but in between zero to size, right? Zero to size. Just ignore the WhatsApp thing that you're getting right now. But yeah, now what is the output that I'm going to get for each and every X and Y? That is going to be something that is really very interesting to understand over here, guys. I'm going to take all of this value and paste it over here. And I'm going to say that this is some kind of a value that we're getting. Now, instead of pi, I'm going to write np.py. Uh, in place of sigma, I'm going to write sigma. I'm going to define it over here. Let me just choose it three over here. And over here, this x, there is something that I'm going to change. I'm going to take this x, do this minus size, divide, divide by two. Okay, and then square that part. Similarly for the y, y minus size, divide, divide by two, and we are done. What have we done? We have centered all of these values over here, nothing more than that, okay? So yeah, this is something that we have done. And uh, the value I now want to append all of these values in the respective x comma y that we are getting in the container. So for that, what I'm going to implement, I'm going to just come one unit down and say that in the container, in your respective x and y that we are getting over here, starting from zero, zero, okay? So this is the first value that I'm going to in, uh, pass in, that is at value zero comma zero, what kind of output do I need to get? This is the value. The value that we have just got in the previous line, I am just passing that particular value. This will be the maximum value because both X and Y are zero. And make sure that these values are also centered because of this thing, okay? So just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, the outputs uh, will be according to that. So if I'm going to run this particular for loop, I'm going to expect that this container is nothing but my kernel. So I'm just going to rename it to kernel. Say this is also kernel. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to visualize this now. Hopefully everything is going to work fine. plt dot I am show uh, of what kernel, right? And plt dot show. Hopefully everything is working fine. Fingers crossed. Yes, this is the kind of output do we get, right? We are getting that. Uh, over here, it's zero comma zero, okay? All of these things have been shifted, but now it's because the default settings starts from zero, zero. It's something you are seeing over here, but just not to get confused, I'm also going to turn off the axis. PLT.axis is going to be simply turned off, okay? And along with that, I'm also going to visualize this in the color map of gray. Why? Just something I really wanted to keep it according to the assignment. Okay, now if I'm running this, you are having the same kind of output that you had expected in your assignment, right? So yes, guys, this is something that I really wanted to show you. The only thing that you had to understand is that how you are uh, sending this X and Y values in the center. You are doing this with the help of the size divided by, by two. And I hope even this kind of formula is making sense now why this formula exists for the Gaussian kernel. And yeah, this is how you are going to create a kernel. Now, in place of the zeros, I could have literally choose anything. It should just be of size 25 by 25. That's something that I wanted. And that's what I'm specifying over here. I can also have, let's say ones, it's still fine. Because the only thing that I'm getting from this kernel is on what index I want to have that specific value, the value that I'm getting from the Gaussian function. I'm just replacing the value. So the only one thing I need is the indexes. What indexes? This index is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. So on 0, 0, I gave that value that was centered at 0, 0 exactly over here. Okay. So this kind of values I'm passing for each and everything and all of them are centered and that's the reason why you got the output in the middle of the screen, okay? I'm showing it to you over here, just a second. Yeah, okay, I'm going to close this part. And what happens if I'm not having this zero? Uh, centered part is not there, let's see what happens. Let me run this. 
you can see that it's on the top left. Why? Because that's where the zero zero part is. That's where the maximum value is there. So you need to take that part, shift it to the center. Let's see what happens if I'm just shifting the X value to the center. Okay. That is minus size lower operation two. And now run this. See, now what's happening? Uh, it just changed in the X. Yeah, the reason you are seeing it in, in the Y is because X are nothing but the rows, right? So these are the rows. So in the rows, you are shifting this in the bottom part. That's the reason it moved down. And Y is nothing but the columns, right? So columns are over here. So to shift this to the right, you are going to have uh, Y minus size floor operation 2. See, now it's in the center. So yes, now you can see that the spread over here is controlled with the help of sigma value. So if I go ahead over here and um, try to like, you know, get this kind of thing. Let's say over here, where is sigma? Yeah, over here. I'm going to change it to five. You are going to see that the radius has been increased now. See, the radius has increased. Why? Because more values your Gaussian function is taking. In this X and Y, you are going to get some outputs. And everywhere else where you are seeing still this kind of black spots are the values which are zero. Okay, All of these values are zero. You can play with this now. And yeah, that was about the Gaussian kernel. Now, if you are someone who is wondering why you are getting this kind of output now, right? Why not that kind of a bell-shaped curve? Because this is the 2D output that we are having and we are watching it from the top. Okay, and from the top, uh, this is uh, the part of the center where the maximum value is present and everywhere else the like, you know, all the other values are present. All right, guys, so the whole code I have written with respect to the 3D plot of uh, like, you know, the Gaussian 2D kernel that we had created. So I'm just going to run this code. And yeah, this is the kind of output that you, you are getting. And now you can clearly see that uh, like, you know, uh, from the top view, if I show it to you. It's going to look something that you had visualized uh, like, you know, in your previous videos output. Uh, yeah, this was the kind of output that we were having, right? A proper square output. Let me just change the orientation of it as a square. Yeah, this was the kind of output that you had looked into the previous video. Now I'm just going to delete this axis to visualize it even better. Just note that the values of zero has been shifted. And you are getting the zero zero over here, but the values that we are showing over here is already shifted. So don't get confused. But to just have a better visualization, I'm going to turn off the axis. Okay, I'm just going to turn it off and plot it again. Just look into the magic of this. How beautiful this is looking like. The whole Gaussian kernel that you had created is something like this. Okay. So yes, guys, that was about this whole idea about how you can create your own Gaussian kernel. I can just change the values. Don't worry about the code. Uh, coding is not important. The important part is that you are able to understand all of these things. Let me just change it to 10 and see what happens. See, this is the more spread that you're getting over here. Getting very square kind of thing because uh, the output is like, you know, 25 by 25. So more the value of radius, you just need to increase the value of that also, the size. Let's say I'm changing this to 30 this time. Again, you had this kind of circular kind of region, right? The more secure region you will be getting only and only if you're having that proper ratio of the size. Let's say I'm changing it to 50, it will be uh, better now. See over here. This is the kind of kernel that you have created. But yeah, you can have the kernel such that you are distributing it across a proper size. So that not a single thing is missing. And now you convolve that thing on top of that particular original image to get a proper amount of uh, denoising uh, kind of effect. Okay. But this is something that I'm just playing around to show you this kind of outputs. It's just beautiful, right? Isn't it? So yes, guys, that's it about this particular whole idea about how you can create your own Gaussian 2D kernel and do a lot of different stuff after this, right? So yeah.